Okay, so Pi News episode 63, and uh, I'm just starting this by installing Ubuntu Mate 22.04. For a long time, Ubuntu Mate has definitely been worth using on a Raspberry Pi 4, a 64-bit, very stable operating system. I do plan to do a separate video on Ubuntu Mate 22.04, but I thought I'd boot it up just because uh, it's just come out. If you want to know more information about it and how it's all put together, check out Wimpy's World. Martin Wimpress does an amazing job on this, very, very informative and uh, loads of things about optimizing and installing. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. First up from Facebook was this story from Chris Rates. I want to definitely say scam, even with the price of $64 for an eight gig. I want to buy, but feel like I'll regret it. Site shows 996 in stock. And uh, if you go down through the comments, I haven't seen anybody who's actually tried to buy one. Obviously loads of people are asking the question about buying it and so on. Good comment from Scott Hansen. Do this, head over to the site in the OP and click on About Us and then Read. So if we click on it, it's still there. This was the 1st of July and today is, I don't know what the date is, the 11th. So you pay with PayPal debit or credit card, $64. I don't know what the 5,283 dollars was. But if we do click on the hamburger menu and contact us, and then about us, we are providing best quality t-shirt, our t-shirt exclusive, fashionable and comfortable t-shirt. So it looks like all this is from a template and hasn't been filled in. But yeah, buyer beware, I thought it would be worth showing it on Pi News. So it's unlikely that a non-official shop would get good amounts of stock and still be in stock 10 days later. So this story from Notebook Check, uh, Dev Term Kit Portable Computer Gains Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 Compatibility. And you can see here, this is an adapter to be able to use a Compute Module 4, if you can get one, in the slot that used to use a Compute Module 3. So they've changed the form factor. And if you have a look at the Dev Term site, uh, just to show you what sort of thing it is, you can see this is a battery module uh, with a Compute Module 3, there's a fan and all sorts of things here. But if we scroll down, so you can see this keyboard uh, with a physical mini trackball and the mouse button's at the bottom here, but with uh, raised keys. And yeah, this is the unit that it's designed for, a super cool looking unit. So to think that you can go from a Compute Module 3 to a Compute Module 4 with that adapter, as I say, if you can get hold of a Compute Module 4, uh, the power would be much, much greater. So yeah, very, very nice. Again, from Facebook, I did enjoy this from Keo Deakin, building a $500 PC in 2022. You can see it's an X64 with all the bits and things in it with Linus. And uh, in 2021, it's just a case with a Pi in it. Next up, I had an uh, email yesterday from YouTube. YouTube removed your content. Luckily, I haven't got a content strike for it. But uh, hi, Lee PSP video. We wanted to let you know our team has reviewed your content and we think that it violates our harmful and dangerous policy. Now, I can't think what would be in there that would be harmful and dangerous. Uh, I was wondering what site to upload it to. Uh, if you can let me know what you think is the best site to be able to put content that's removed from YouTube. Not that I think loads of people watch this video. Uh, I don't think it was that popular. I can't see how many views it had. But uh, yeah, I, just for the interest of, of what it was removed for, I think it's more to do with anything to do with media centers. And I always stay away from all the, the um, streaming stuff that's not legal. Uh, so I, I'm pretty sure I showed Netflix in the video. Yeah, I did. But I would have used my Netflix signed in account. I wouldn't use it if it was one that was a free Netflix account. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what that is. But yeah, let me know where I should upload it and uh, people can have a look for themselves. I'll put a link in the description if I've put it somewhere else. Although I don't know if I'm allowed to do that to another streaming site. Next up, it's Prime Day tomorrow, and uh, I've got a link to try Prime for free. Uh, it definitely helps the channel if people sign up through that. But also, if you browse through and end up buying something, even if you're already a Prime member, I think it still benefits me. Uh, something I bought recently, which I'm really pleased with, is this Ring Video Doorbell. Uh, which is now $59.99, cheaper than I paid, although I got it as a bundle. Yeah, it's a really, really good system, works really well with my phone. Uh, it also, I kind of got it as well to learn how the video doorbells work and see how I can possibly use that uh, to my advantage with a Pi. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping this Ring doorbell. I'm probably going to keep paying the £25 yearly subscription for the benefits it gives me, but for other cameras, dotted around the house, in the garden and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna use the Pi and then obviously there's no subscription for that. But yeah, as my main doorbell, it's already been really useful and uh, I've already intercepted a few calls and uh, had parcels put in different places and yeah, things that would have been more hassle if I didn't have one. 
So next up uh, is this headphone amp Pi music player and you can see it's got valves in it and anything with valves in just looks cool. Uh, anything with electronics and wood tends to look cool as well. Millet Hybrid Rev MH headphone amp with Pi Zero W, Just Boom DAC and USB storage. They don't look like high-end headphones to me but I could be wrong. I can't even see the Pi Zero in there, it must be underneath is it? Yeah, I think it must be underneath this bit here. But uh, yeah, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to know more about doing that sort of thing for yourself. Yeah, it looks looks really nice. Next up, I got contacted by Tupmanka Lanks on YouTube. Uh, I've already covered some of his cases in videos before. He makes some really, really good 3D printed cases and has been doing for a long time. So some of the best looking 3D cases that you've seen uh, in pictures and around the web have been made by Tupmanka Lanks. And uh, he did offer me to send me a case, but I have so many cases that uh, for pies that I don't really need any more. But this does look really, really nice. Uh, very, very cool. There's an option for a two and a half inch drive as well. And, uh, and also there's uh, links to be able to print them out yourself. So if you're interested in doing something like that, then uh, and you have a 3D printer like I do, then you can print one out and uh, build it yourself. He also does videos of him assembling it as well. The latest one he hasn't uploaded because he doesn't think it's that good, but I think it's a great video and I would definitely make it publicly available. People are interested to see how these things fit together and uh, yeah, great work. I did suggest that maybe a Pi 400 case would be popular. Uh, now I thought about it uh, in this video, Pi 400 still widely available. I've got a picture of something I thought would would kind of work to replace the base part of it because the cooling is underneath the keyboard and above the board uh, with something that had storage space for an SSD drive uh, and maybe there's some other ideas that could be implemented but I would really like to be able to slot uh, an SSD drive and have, have some way of having a very short adapter between the two. I did talk about a fan before but it doesn't need a fan, the cooling is amazing on a Pi 400 and you can see there's a case, uh, this is just to encase it, to use it like a single board computer. Next up from Tom's Hardware, a very cool looking Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 handheld second generation model. So there's a Kickstarter for this one. So the original Lyra had a Compute Module 3 in it, so much less powerful. Uh, I wonder if that adapter I mentioned earlier on would go inside it. Probably not because it's such a small device. Expansion of the IPS touchscreen to 7 inches in this new model. Double the battery capacity, dual analog sticks. Dual analog sticks is great because something like uh, PlayStation 1, uh, PlayStation 2, although not a lot of PlayStation 2 will run on the CM4, and maybe GameCube games. It is $380 for a, um, a pre-order, so it's, it's not cheap. But it does look really nice, and because it's based around Raspberry Pi hardware, then compatibility is going to be great on it. Another Kickstarter, uh, Revocade, and this is an arcade device, but uh, it's got a really unique function to it in that you can swap out the controls. So you could see standard joystick and a couple of buttons for Pac-Man, um, but uh, maybe you'd like a steering wheel and a shifter for a driving game. I always like, one of my favourite arcade games is Tron, which uses an arcade spinner. Uh, it would need a joystick as well. Something very interesting, if you're interested in the arcade side of it, it runs on a Raspberry Pi 4 as well, so that's always nice to see. Have a look at the Kickstarter if this is something that you think you'd be interested in. Another bit of crafting uh, with the Pi, so this is a Pi 4B, and uh, it's in a walnut case, and as you can see, it looks really, really smart. Uh, if we have a look at some of the close-ups, yeah, really, really nicely finished. Uh, you can see access to the ports here. This is uh, a hinge system where I guess this sits on here to take the weight of the lid. A couple of speakers as well. It does look like a really, really nice piece of kit. And when you see it inside, I'm guessing it must be a wireless controller because obviously if it was handheld, uh, that wouldn't be so comfortable. Uh, it looks like an ethernet cable or a power cable. Lovely looking piece of kit. So from Hackaday, we had a PlayStation 2 gets a seamless media center makeover. And I just always like to see how people fit things in and get things working. Uh, you can see there's a large uh, Toshiba drive in there. Looks like a Raspberry Pi 4. And it fits in a very small PlayStation 2 Slim. More Raspberry Pis in space, which is incredible, really. So you can see a photo of the Aeroboom after successful deployment, courtesy of a Raspberry Pi camera module. 
And here is the Pi Zero W, responsible for all onboard computing running Python scripts developed by the team. A secondary mission of the satellite was to test the viability of affordable commercial microcontrollers such as the Raspberry Pi. Looks like it all went well to me. And you can see from the comments was any hardening done to the Pi. No physical RAD hardening was added to a Pi Zero. Thanks to its robustness and some clever code design, the Pi performed amazingly. Very nice looking portable computer, the MNT Pocket Reform. Nice raised keys. So recyclable case, reusable parts, open source hardware and software. So it supports loads of different boards, but there is an option for a Pi Compute Module 4, 7 inch screen. Yeah, very stylish. Hackaday Prize 2022, a CM4 upgrade to your old iPad. And this is an incredible project really. So it's a 2010 iPad and uh, the idea is to put a Compute Module 4 in it so that it's up to date and uh, there's all sorts of pictures, loads and loads of information. Really, really clever, and uh, there's project pages here with lots of photos, lots of code. You can see the screen is up and running. Very, very detailed pics of all the boards and everything. Super impressive. Internal views with the batteries, and loads of detail involved as well. Look at that, that looks super difficult. So last Pi News, I mentioned the Pico W, which is a Wi-Fi enabled version of the Raspberry Pi Pico which sold out very quick and uh, already we're starting to see some great projects on it. Uh, there's a really interesting story on raspberrypi.com and this is Meet the Engineers Behind Raspberry Pi Pico and they basically talk you through it. I won't go through it because I think it's probably something worth reading yourself but uh, it goes about how they worked out the design and various other things but yeah really great article very very interesting. We had a project where the Wi-Fi garage door come out uh, and this is a really nice project from Core Electronics and uh, it's controlled by a smartphone and a web page and really nice to see how it all works together. Very ambitious project. Jeff Geerling is also doing a garage door uh, project as well. So it'll be interesting to co sort of compare the two and see the different ways that people work these things out. It's beyond what I could do, but uh, I'm always very impressed to see this sort of thing. I'll put a link in the description to this one. Uh, what I might try is this article from Tom's Hardware, how to build a Raspberry Pi Pico W web app with Anvil. Uh, because I have one of these displays. Uh, it talks about uh, a sensor there as well, but it goes through all the details and how you can actually rig it up yourself. Having a look through things like that sort of gets you to learn what you can do with it and how you can adapt it to make it useful for you. So another project with the Pico W was this one on Twitter, which is a network scanner. Uh, and so green LEDs are secure networks, amber are hidden SSIDs, and red are for insecure open networks. And we're bound to see loads more projects in the future. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.